In this tutorial, I want to provide an overview of NURBS components in Maya. Um, your, when your object is selected as green, as this one, you're in object mode. Uh, when you're in, comp in component mode, you can select the components that are used to make up your NURBS object. When you right click on your NURBS object, you see that it brings up your components menu. And for the purpose of this tutorial, let's look at some of our components. We have our surface points, we have our control verte vertices, our isoparms, and our hulls. Okay? Let's start with the control vertices. The control vertices are the vertices which are used to create and to define your nerves surfaces. They're points in space. Because they're points, they have no dimensions and they only describe a location in space. Therefore, the only thing that they can be used to do is to sort of transform your surface through translations. So you can move them about in space. Note that as you move your components or as you select your CVs, You'll note that the patch, this white area, represents the influence patch of that CV. And normally it's normally two spans in each direction. Okay? Because as you note, you need three CVs, control vertices, to begin a NURBS curve. So it's showing the influence of those points across the NURBS surface, which we have here. But you can only you're only restricted to operations which involve translation. Okay, uh, you'll note that if you click on the object and you try to do a rotation, there's no effect. If you try to do a scale, there's no effect because basically you're scaling an nth dimensional, a zero dimensional object in space. So. When you're working on your control vertices, you can only move them, but they're a great way to begin to sculpt your geometry. Okay? Now, let's look at our next element, our next component, which is our hulls. Now, our hulls you can think of as a cage that's used to connect your CVs around your object. And when you're in hull mode, what it does, it selects a ring of your control vertices um, in either a horizontal direction, U, or a vertical direction, as I select this one, in V. Once again, we see that influence to this way, to that way, and to this way, and basically it selects a whole row. But what's nice about your hulls is that because that's more than one vertice, you can actually not only move them in space, like so, and like so, but you can also rotate them in space, okay, about any of your three axes which is shown in your manipulator here. You can rotate them in space and you can also scale them to transform your geometry. Also note that when you have your hull selected, if you use your arrow keys, it will move through the rows your left and right arrow key moves through the rows of hulls on your object. Okay? If you select one of these, you can use your up down arrow to go through the spans of your object. And you can select one, choose it, and then move those in space to transform your object. Now, uh, one of the ways to really understand the relationship between your hulls and your CVs is to come into your display menu, and when you come down to NURBS display, 
turn on your hulls permanently. Okay, when you do that, your hulls are on permanently. Okay, but when you go into component mode and you choose control vertex, you can clearly see the relationship between the hulls and your vertices. And what's nice about this, in this mode, you can select individual vertices and work on them at an individual level and still view your hull cage. And you can also come back and click on your hulls and work on your hulls as a group also. Okay, and this is really good for allowing you to uh, model your geometry. And I go back into vertex mode and I can select and work on my vertices individually. Also, if you come into your view menu, to your shading um, menu, and turn it to x ray, you can see it's sort of like ghosted in Rhino. You can see the interior of your. Um, model so if I wanted to get to that hull right there by ghosting it I could see it a little bit better and I can also look at my geometry and begin to um, sculpt it a little more efficiently because I can see all the elements while my model is still shaded and I can see both my hulls and my CVs okay now let's click on our um, our, our object and this time let's go into isoparms okay what our isoparm tool allows us to do we can click on our object and we can drag up in this case another row like this okay and then we can go to edit nerves insert isoparm and that adds both another hull another hull another isoparm and if I go to Control Vertex, another group of CVs that I can use to fine tune my model. Okay, and that's a good way. It provides a good means for adding detail to your model. You can go back here to Isoparm, click here, drag this down here, and then I can go to Edit Nerves, and I can insert another Isoparm. And now I have more detail in that area. Now you note, if I'm in isoparm mode and I click on one of my rows here, I can go there and once again edit NURBS, insert isoparm, and I've added another row there. So this provides a means for you to add local detail to your model, like so. Isoparms are also important when we go to isoparm, select, select an isoparm, like so, and you go edit nerves, detach surfaces, and it will detach my surface at the isoparm okay and that's why that's another way that they're very useful that they're um, that you can use them to detach your surfaces from each other and what's what you always want to do is that you always want to make sure that you have a complete curve when you do an attachment because then uh, nerve surfaces are always built on curves you can then um, build the surfaces back together by using the curves that uh, you've created from your detachments. Okay, and we'll meld that back together like so. Um, let me go into my display, NURBS, and I want to turn off my hulls, and I also want to go to my shading turn off my x-ray and I still have two surfaces here click on your object with the right mouse button and this time in component mode bring up your surface patch what that allows you to do it puts these dots almost like your face mode in um, in in polygons but this allows you to click on 
your surface patches and oftentimes you'll use this when you want to duplicate patches that exist on a surface. In this case we have those patches duplicated and then we can come up to edit NURBS, duplicate NURBS patches and it produces a duplicate of the patches that exist on your object. And that about does it.